This lesson will be proving lines parallel or perpendicular. Uh, I'm going to go over some postulates and theorems, and then we'll go ahead and apply these theorems to a situation. Parallel postulate, if a given line and a point not on the line, then there exists exactly one line that is parallel to P, or that point. So in other words, there is a point on this line, then there exists another line that is parallel to that point on that line. If two lines are cut by a transversal so that corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines will be parallel. So these are corresponding angles. So this line and this line will be parallel. And the other line that is intersecting those two lines is the transversal. So this is the converse of the corresponding angle postulate. The converse of the alternate interior angles, if two lines are cut, if two lines are cut by transversal, that alternate angles, alternate interior angles are congruent, then what it's saying is that these two lines we can conclude will be parallel. So as long as these two are congruent, then we can make the conclusion that the, the two lines will be parallel. The converse of the alternate interior exterior angles. If two lines are cut by a transversal set all, so that alternate exterior lines, exterior angles are congruent. So here are the exterior angles. And what they're saying is those two are congruent. Then the lines here will be parallel. So that's a converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem. The converse to the consecutive interior angle theorem, if two lines are cut by a transversal, that consecutive or same side interior angles are supplementary, then we can conclude that these two lines will be parallel. So we need to make sure, we have to check if those consecutive interior angles are supplementary then we can conclude that the lines are indeed parallel. Which lines or segments are parallel? So here is a transversal, and we have these two lines that are intersected by that transversal, and they form congruent angles. By the way, these are corresponding angles. So we can conclude that BE is parallel to CG. Now we got to make sure that we give a reason. So it's going to be the converse of the corresponding angle theorem. The converse, converse of the corresponding angle theorem. Number two, we have, once again, we have two lines. We have these two lines, and this is your transversal. And once again, we have these are your corresponding angles. Uh, so we can conclude that PS is parallel to segment Q, QT. I'll go ahead and say lines. Lines PS is parallel to line QT because corresponding, the converse of the corresponding angle theorem, just like the one in example number one. Number three, once again, we have two lines that are parallel. I take that back. We have two lines that form corresponding angles congruent with the transversal. So we can say that segment CA is parallel to segment HR for the same reason that we said before, the converse of the uh, converse of the corresponding angle theorem. It's because of the converse of the corresponding angle. Okay, number four, uh, we do have this transversal, and we do have this line, and we have this line, that intersect the transversal and form corresponding angles that are congruent. So once again, we can say that KR, KR is parallel to segment MT. Now, in problems one, two, three, and four, it was just coincidence that all of them were corresponding converse or corresponding angle theorem. Uh, in your homework or uh, on any other problems, there could be a mixture of reasons why two lines are parallel. So that's kind of like a warning. We're going to complete this flow chart proof. Remember, in a flow chart, it's sort of like it flows, of course. 
And we always start with a given and what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that these two lines are parallel. Angle one and angle three are supplementary. Well, that was given to us. So angle one and angle three are supplementary. Angle one and angle two form a linear pair and that's by definition. Now we go from here and here to here. We have angle one and angle two are supplementary. Well, if they are a linear pair, then they form a straight angle. So by definition of linear pair, they are supplementary. So if you see this statement, angle one and angle three are supplementary, angle one and angle two are supplementary, automatically angle three and angle two are congruent because they're, congru they're, they're being added to the same angle and they're supplementary. So that's supplements of the same angles are congruent. So just remember, if they're both supplementary to the same angle, one conclusion you can make is that the angles are congruent. And since these two angles are congruent, and once again, it's just coincidence, these two angles are corresponding angles, so A is parallel to B. Perpendicular lines, two lines that intersect at right angles. Two lines that intersect at 90 degree angles. The next statement is true about perpendicular lines. Perpendicular, perpendicular lines form four right angles. Once again, perpendicular lines form four right angles, and also the the they also uh, have four congruent adjacent angles. Four in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's perpendicular to the other line. For example, this line is parallel to this line. By this T, by line T being perpendicular to A, it will be automatically perpendicular to B. So once again, if you have two lines that are parallel and T is perpendicular to line A, then it will also be perpendicular to line B. The next one states, uh, let's say that you have two lines and you have one line that is perpendicular to M. Let's say that's M, right? Then automatically, T will be perpendicular to the other line. That's true. And then the converse is true. If, if, they, if, if T is perpendicular to M and T is perpendicular to N, then these two lines automatically will be parallel. So it's the converse of the one that I just finished talking about earlier.